What's up folks, this is a monster and today we're going to very quickly set up our state machine nodes and create the blended animations within them. A lot of this should seem very familiar from our previous video so I'll be keeping the explanations on the basic stuff to a minimum. And so for this video we're running Lumberyard Beta 1.11.1.0 with Samples Project as our default project. Cool? So let's begin. Okay, so for the least amount of confusion possible I'm going to start off with a new animation graph here. And before we do anything else in here, let's go ahead and go to our motion set and add a few more animations. The animations we're adding are the idle walk and run animations that we've seen thus far, but with the addition of Jack's right hand up, as though it is aiming a weapon or maybe holding a bouquet of flowers. The other animations are of Jack leaning to the right or left uh, from the hip bone up, but this is for our turning animations. So I'll go ahead and grab those files real quick. Now back in the animation graph, we're going to create our state machine nodes. The first one is called idle state, and we'll host all of our idle animations. And the second one is called move state, and we'll host all of our movement animations. And as we covered in the previous videos, we need a speed parameter to represent the character's movement speed. Let's create some transition lines for these nodes. One going from the idle state to move state and one going from move state to the idle state. Great, so this is our simple setup for state machine nodes in this very short example, but if you're really curious and want to delve into the extensive setups of state machine nodes, I'd highly recommend checking out the advanced RIN locomotion sample in 111's uh, sample project files. Awesome, let's move on. So next, we'll go into the idle state and delete the entry node since we don't really need it, and in place, create a blend tree node. I'll call this idle blend, and as the name suggests, this will host our blended animations for idle. When we deleted our initial node for this space, you may have noticed that the entry state arrow moved to the exit node. We can set this back to our node by selecting the node, right clicking on it, and selecting the set as entry node option. Okay, so let's go into the idle blend node and start creating our blended animations. Now in the beginning of the video, we imported more animations. One of these groups have the aim animations and one does not. So I'm going to add as many motion nodes as I need to get the animations in which in this case is just two nodes, one for the idle and the other for the idle aim. So let's do that real quick. Okay, let's blend these two nodes together with a blend2 node. I'll call this idle blend. For our weight port, we need a new parameter, and I'll call that parameter aim and leave everything else to default. It is going to be a float slider type, so this will give me tons of values to scan through and apply to the animations for our aim pose. Now, as I mentioned, the aim parameter is responsible for the blend ratio between normal and aim animation sets. So with that, let's pull this parameter into the graph with a parameter node. I'm going to collapse this node to just the aim parameter by selecting the node, going to the attributes window, clicking on this select parameter link, and selecting aim. Let's get a smoother node in there and get the nice transitions in numbers and take that result from the node and deliver it to the idle blends weight port. The output post from the idle blend node will go to our final node. And that's pretty much it for the idle state. It looks strangely familiar and super simple. Almost deja vu. Alright, let's just let's just move around with the aim slider and see if it works. Now 
totally does. All right, so let's transition into our move state. Okay, so just like the idle state, let's jump into the move state and replace the entry node with a blend tree node. I'll call this move blend and then set it as my new entry node. Cool, let's jump into that space. And here we're gonna take all of our movement animations and create motion nodes for them. And of course, blend them with some parameters. I'm going to start off with the run and turn animation nodes. So the first one is going to be run left. The second one is gonna be called run forward. Make sure I'm getting the actual motion references here. And then right below that is going to be run right. I'll need a blend end node to get these three motions blended together because we're blending more than two nodes here. I'll call this node run blend n and set the sync mode to event track based. Connect the motion output poses to the blend n ports. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this entire set and reference the run and turn animations that contains our aim animations. Make sure we rename the motion nodes as well and of course change the references. We need a parameter that controls the turn speed, basically the amount of turning power for our character to lean to. So if we're running super fast, our character will lean much further into the direction that it's turning in game. So let's create that parameter. The only thing that changes in this parameter is the minimum value is negative 1.0. So as you can see, when we created our node here is that the default 0.0, .0 is our center, which acts as our forward movement. This makes sense to me visually because then negative one is my left and positive one is my right because they are opposites of each other, just like left and right directions. But now I've created a problem. So the weight ports don't really like negative numbers. So how do I resolve my visual understanding of this network, right? The things that I like and the way I set it up, how do I resolve this so that it doesn't have a negative number? Well, there's a node called range remapper and it's found under math as its name suggests it takes in the expected range and remaps the values to a new user defined range in our case the input minimum range is negative one and the max is 1.0 and for our weight port in the blend end node we need the new minimum to be 0.0, .0 and the max is fine at 1.0 with that i'll call this turn speed normalizer Okay, add a smoother node and send this off to the weight port on both sets for run. Again, this only affects the turning element of our animations, and the aim blending is going to take place in the next section. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a new blend2 node here, and I'm going to call it run blend2. Connect the output poses. The weight port will receive the aim parameter. If there's no aim parameter value, then blend the normal run animations. Else, if there's some aim parameter values, then blend both animations based on the values. 
And if there's a max value, then blend the run aim animations to the final output. So let's bring in our aim parameter into the graph, mask it off. Create and connect a smoother node here and deliver the results to the wait port for our run blend 2 node. Now all that we have left is our walk animations. So I'm just gonna real quickly copy paste the motion nodes and switch the names and references. Again, we're in a similar situation now where we have the blend 2 scenario. So let's resolve that. Of course, we're looking at a standard animation and an aim animation, so we'll need our aim parameter connected to this blend node as well. All we have at the end of these two nodes here are the walk resolved output pose and the run resolved output pose, which we need to blend as well to bring it down to one output pose. For this, since walk and run animations are dependent on the character's movement speed, we'll bring in our speed parameter. Add a smoother and plug this into the new blend 2 node. I'm going to call this new blend 2 move blend 2. Finally, we are at one output pose, so let's connect that to our final pose here and check out the logical results. With our speed value at zero, our character should be in the idle state, and this can also be set by some game logic through the Lua script component as well. When we move our speed slider up, increasing the value from zero, our character should enter the move state, thus presenting the blended animations for movement, and hey, look at that, it's doing exactly what we wanted. Okay, so let's go ahead and mess around with the turn speed slider. And actually, I'll turn the camera around so you can visually see what I meant when I set up this weird slider. Moving the slider to the left will make the character turn left from this perspective, and then the same for right. Awesome, so hopefully this helps build an understanding for both blending of multiple animation sets and state machine setup. Check out the advanced Rin locomotion samples in 1.11 sample project files if you're curious to see how extensive this topic can get. Here's a quick preview on those animation graphs. Just as a heads up, we have some cool content in the works that is going to go over some of the more subsurface elements of emotion effects. Anyways, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and or on the community forums at gamedev.amazon.com forward slash forums. Stay in the know by hitting that subscribe button for the channel. Of course, receive some high praise from yours truly for dunking that like button. Seriously, thanks in advance. And yeah guys, thanks for watching this video. I truly appreciate the time. And so, till the next video, cheers! Awesome, so hopefully this helped.